What is he eating? Okay, hello everybody. Where's everybody? Hi. I have no audience. I thought I had an audience. Okay, we we have been uh, out all afternoon here working on the yard, Ow. and uh, oh. so. Uh, as some of you might already know by now, we had changed our schedule for uh, doing the gospel commentaries and we, we would now be doing it uh, towards the afternoon, evenings, yeah, just depends on uh, the availability of uh, the afternoon schedule. But anyway, now we, uh, we're taking a break from all the digging we're doing and all the planting we're doing, so uh, might be a good time to uh, do the commentary. So. Tomorrow, there's going to be a long gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. Now, this is the story of the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder. Who are those? Huh? James and John, the apostle James and John, right? And their mother, their mother made a... Uh, Actually, not not even not quite a request. Okay, uh, we're getting distracted by Parker here. This little this big big dog. Okay, so uh, the sons of Zebedee, uh, James and John, Saint James and Saint John, their mother went to Jesus, and actually, actually, uh, uh, did not make a request. It was more like a command. Or it was more like an imposition. He told, she told, she told Jesus, command, okay, command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Could you imagine that? She was already trying to, uh, to, uh, um, you know, to place, to place her own sons and trying to assure, right, that. Her own sons get the best place in heaven. One on the right hand of Jesus, one on the left. Okay? She wanted the best places. You see, that's common for any parent. Right? Parents like the best things for their children. So, in the case of the mother of uh, St. John and uh, St. James, she was trying to secure the best places <laughs> in heaven for her own sons. One on the right, one on the left. Now, but look at what Jesus tells her. You do not know what you are asking for. Okay? Can you drink the chalice, the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. We can. What is that chalice? What is the chalice? Remember at Mass, when we raise, the priest raises the chalice at consecration, what does he say? Okay, so that that chalice is to be is to be changed into the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Being offered, that was offered rather at Calvary when he died, when he died. So the challenge that uh, Jesus issued to Saint John and Saint James, and really to all of the apostles and to all of us as well, is that. Well, you want to ask the best places in heaven, but can you actually come follow me? See? Can you actually follow my act? What is my act? Well, I'm going to die on the cross. I am about to, uh, I am about to uh, spill my, my blood for the salvation of souls. Right? I am about to be crucified. And... Uh, and are you, are you willing to go all the way with me on this? Are you willing to also save souls with me? That is what the chalice is all about. Are you willing to go all the way with this mission with me? Even to the point of death? Even if, even if it might take martyrdom for you? Are you really, really willing to do that? See, because what are those places that the mother was asking for in heaven? 
only saints can have choice places in heaven right because if we're not saints we will not be in heaven we're not going to be joining God in heaven. We're not going to be with Jesus in heaven. Whether it's beside Him or a few paces away from Him, it really doesn't matter. The more, the more important uh, part of that is that we get to heaven. Now the thing is, only saints get to heaven. And if we are not saints, we don't go to heaven. As simple as that. Now, but what does it take to go to heaven? To go to heaven, Jesus said, come follow me. Are you willing to drink of the chalice that I am about to drink? Are you willing to take up the mission that I am taking up for my life? The reason why I came down on earth, which is the salvation of souls. Are you willing to do that with me? Okay. That was the challenge of, of Jesus to uh, uh, James and John and to all the apostles and truly to all the baptized. Right? Because all of us who were baptized into the Catholic faith, that was the mission that was given to us by Jesus Christ. So that is the extent of the sanctity that we need to live. To the point even of martyrdom, to the point of drinking the cup, the chalice, to the point of offering our lives for God. And, well, the apostles answered, yes, we can. Now, what about us? Can we also boldly answer, yes, we can? Can we also face Jesus there on the cross and tell him, yes, Jesus, I want to attach myself to that mission of yours on the cross. Yes, Jesus, I want to be an instrument of yours to save souls. Yes, Jesus, I want to be a... a, a part of this whole mission so give me part of that chalice eh? give me part of that chalice you know and and Jesus can give that chalice to anybody you don't have to wait to be an adult to do that eh? we have just celebrated the the feast of uh, the three children of Fatima remember not too long ago a few months ago and those children of Fatima well were given the chalice were given the cup and they themselves took up the challenge to help save souls. How? Through their prayer, through their mortification, through the sufferings that uh, uh, Jacinta and uh, Francisco suffered. Right? They got sick. That was part of the chalice that they had to drink. That was part of the sacrifice. So those two were martyrs already at a very early age. And there were many other children who were martyrs. Right? Uh, uh, Dominic Savio for one thing right offered his life maybe he didn't die as a martyr but yes the sickness that he died of you know is is uh, taking up the chalice of Jesus Christ because he offered all of that for the salvation of souls for those friends he had in the same uh, boys community that uh, Don Bosco put up right? and who was that other saint we uh, there are several other saints uh, Maria Goretti right uh, um, who was that other saint who was carrying the Eucharist and he was uh, he was Aloysius. Aloysius who was uh, um, uh, who? oh yes Saint Tarsius Tarsius or Tarsius or one of those okay so there have been many kids who have become saints and martyrs also Saint Aloysius. yeah Aloysius Gonzaga the Jesuit that's a different guy okay so so in other words what I'm trying to tell you here is that you don't have to wait until you're adults to be able to share in the salvific mission of Jesus Christ. Okay? You and I, you as children, can do little mortifications every day. Remember what we say in the Rosary, the Sorrowful Mysteries, right? That we take up our cross every day and we have to ask Jesus to and Our Lady to help us take up our cross daily okay? to follow our Lord, to follow Jesus. So... Um, now, how, how were James and John able to say, we can? Why were they so bold to say, yeah, we can drink of that chalice? What made them capable of doing that, of saying that? Okay. And what do you think can make us capable of <coughs> affirming the same thing? What's that, Sophia? Grace. 
the grace of God. Okay? The grace of God. So we can also answer our Lord and say, yes, we can think of that chalice. Not because we think we're Superman or we are Spider-Man. <laughs> or we are some kind of a superhero that we can, yeah, conquer the world by ourselves. No. Actually, what makes it more possible is the grace of God grace of God. God gives us the grace to take up that mission. The only thing He's asking from us is some effort. Some effort, which is not even too great. Because the effort He wants us to put in is just to do the everyday duties of daily life extraordinarily well. That's all there is to it. Come to think of it, that's all there is to it. The only effort we need to supply is do your studies very well. Do the washing of the dishes very well. Vacuum those floors uh, 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 with, with attention to detail. See? Dig those holes we are digging right here with a little bit more of perseverance, with a little bit more of patience. Right? Treat your brothers and your sisters with a little bit more of patience. So little things. It, you don't have to die on the cross to take up the chalice of Jesus Christ. Do the everyday duties of everyday life extraordinarily well. Okay? And God will supply the rest. God will supply the rest of the grace you need in order to become a saint. So that you too can, you too can take up the challenge that Jesus issues to each and every one of us. Okay? So it's really beautiful, really simple. Okay? What we need to do is respond to that grace of God. Respond. Okay? Forget about ourselves. Okay? Forget about our, our preferences. Forget about our own likes and our own dislikes. You put that, put that away. Let's only think of doing our best in everything and serving others. Okay? Serving others. By serving others, we are doing the mission of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay. That's it for us. <laughs> That's it for us. I'm enjoying this new schedule. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Bye! Oh, somebody's bungy. What happened to your tooth? You're toothless now. Okay, folks. Have a good day. Have a good night. No, no, no. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.